Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, your humble agent Raven has returned with another episode of Clearing Out a Vault. Being on somewhat of a time crunch, this is a double episode containing both shotguns and snipers. So let's get the show on the road. So starting off with the high rate of fire, low impact shotguns. From the legacy content from Vanilla, we have the Invisible Hand M7. And from the Dark Below expansion, we have Secret Handshake. And then the Sword Breaker from the Crota's End raid found off Crota himself in normal or hard mode. Bring up the House of Wolves, we have Wolfborn Oath. Bought off Varix for a weapon core when he has it. Or Judgment's Chance, weapon or armor core. And the Dry Rot 32 being a reward from Dragon Strikes. So as our table shows us, we see the Swordbreaker is the leader of the pack in this category of shotguns, with Dry Rot hot on his heels. But as we go further down the line to the Invisible Hand, the Wolfborn Oath, and the Secret Handshake, honestly their red barring stats aren't really all that detrimental for shotguns in general, making this category fairly comparable in and of itself. Next up in our shotgun quest is the Rate of Fire 23 Impact 52, consisting of vanilla shotguns The Comedian, The Crash, Hide and Seek, then beelining straight to House of Wolves with the Hard Luck Charm available from the Crucible Quartermaster, and the Root Awakening DOA available from the Dead Orbit Vendor. And again, our handy table shows us that the leader of the pack in this category is The Comedian, followed by Hide and Seek, with the Hard Luck Charm, Root Awakening, and the crash actually starting to show a little bit of a disadvantage when it comes to its reload speeds and Rude Awakening having a fairly heavy range detriment. So moving on to the Rate of Fire 14 Impact 61 shotguns, where we have the Dark Below, 2 to the Morgue, the Judgment 6, which is currently findable off New Monarchy Vendor, Found Verdict, Found in Vault of Glass, Normal Mode off the Oracles, and Her Courtesy, the Queen's Wrath shotgun, found in prison of Elders' Big Chests. So it shouldn't be much of a surprise that our table shows us that leader of this pact is indeed the Found Verdict, followed pretty hotly by Two to the Morgue, a close third belonging to that of Judgment Six, and her courtesy bringing up the rear. And as a special in-between in these, we have the Party Crasher Plus One, which operates as the single occupant of a Ray of Fire 11 Impact 64, found from Crucible Match Rewards, is considered the rather unfavorable option for a Fell Winter Sniper, and when compared to shotguns in general, we find that it does have range somewhat comparable to the Fell Winter's line, a mid-range stability, a little low on the reload side, pretty high aim assist stat, and a baseline handling. But with the reload and handling being that higher of most of the other Fell Winters category, we find that it can be a plausible substitution. Which brings us to the final category of that indeed, the Fell Winters category. So we have the Astral Horizon, the Trials of Osiris shotgun, the Matador 64, found from Crucible Match Rewards, and Fell Winters Lie itself, the Iron Banner shotgun. Now our table interestingly shows us at least for the tied position of leader of the pack, we have the Astral Horizon, which sadly is not capable of reaching that Fell Winter sniper status. But we see right next to it the Matador 64 when compared against Fell Winter's Lie. Matador has a touch better reload, quite a bit to the aim assist as well as handling, and then a better inventory overall, with its only disadvantage to the Fell Winters being one less round in the magazine. So personally, I'd probably go with Matador 64 on this one. If you're you're looking for that sniper class shotgun. And now we move along to the sniper rifles, starting with the Rate of Fire 43 Impact 10, starting with Subtle Nudge DN7, found from the Crucible Quartermaster, and the 2020 AMR7, found as a Dragon Strike Drop. So as our table shows us that these two sniper rifles are not too incredibly different, primarily holding differences in stability and recoil direction, while Subtle Nudge has much better stability, it also has much lower recoil direction. Though all in all, this category of sniper rifle is not my own personal recommendation. And on to the Rate of Fire 40 Impact 13 sniper rifles, occupied by Prudence the Second from Vanilla and the, the Eye of Soul from the Trials of Osiris. At least in this category, we do start seeing the benefit of being capable of two-hit body shotting in PvP. We see that the Eye of Soul has just enough stats that 
are far enough from Prudence just to be noticeable. It's still not quite a recommended category of sniper rifles for myself, but we do see that I have soul. It's somewhat of a clear first place. Somewhat. We go into the Rate of Fire 37 Impact 16 sniper rifles, those capable of some solid two-shot body shot kills in regular PvP. Starting off this line, we have the final boss from Vanilla. We have Praetor's Revenge, dropped from Vault of Glass during the Oracle's encounter. From the House of Wolves, we have the Chosen from the Future War Cult Vendor, the Amplified G.O.D. 6 from Vanguard Quartermaster, and Violator 12 from the New Monarchy Vendor. So finally, we have more than two guns to compare. And we see that while arguably the final boss and the Amplified Geo have the least amount of red bar stats, an argument can be made for first place going to pray to this revenge while having two red bars well dominates stat wise in other categories it's only perceived weakness by many being a low aim assist score with violator 12 still being fairly comparable moving on to the rate of fire 26 impact 22 sniper rifles of destiny we start to see the beginnings of the revived sniper category starting with the vanilla sniper rifle of broken truth lr1 and the epitaph 2261 and in the house of wolves we have the low grade human Humility found as a crucible match reward drop. Now again, we have a little bit of ambiguity for the first place spot for this category of sniper rifles, with Epitaph having the fewest reds, but at the same time Broken Truth having the most blues. And low grade humility itself is not a bad runner up to either of these choices. And now we find ourselves in the Rate of Fire 19 Impact 31 category of sniper rifles in Destiny going deeper into the revived snipe category. Starting off with the LDR-5001 from Vanilla, the Y-09 Longbow Synthesis found from in the dark below. Then we have the Supremacy found during the original Queen's Wrath event, and the House of Wolves representing Shadow of Veils, found off Varix for a weapon core when he has it, and from a Judgment's Chance. For weapon and an armor core. And her benevolence, the Queen's Wrath sniper rifle found from the Prison of Elders big chests. And as our table shows us when it comes down just to the stats of it, I do apologize, but if you missed out on the supremacy, it is the stat leader of this category of sniper rifle. And if you do have a supremacy and it has an awful role for perks, then I feel for you as well. But a solid second place, of course, belongs to the LDR 5001, and the Shadow of Veils not following too far behind them. And even the Longbow Synthesis being quite comparable to those, and no surprise that her benevolence is bringing up the rear. Surrounding all this out, we have the Rate of Fire 12 Ultra Impact of 37 sniper rifles, occupied by the Black Hammer, found in the Crota's Inn raid off Crota himself, and Ephrodite Spear, the Iron Banner sniper rifle. And as our table shows us, as is somewhat common with these sniper rifles, is that these two are not very far separated from one another. But what truly makes Ephrodite Spear the leader of this pack is indeed his rerollability. Not only slightly better in stats, but also in versatility. And indeed, there we have the sniper rifles and shotguns of Destiny. I do apologize if it seemed a little rushed, but then again, on the same side, it kind of is. Trying to get these out with as much room before not only the Taken King, but also before Destiny 2.0 drops to keep this hopefully as helpful as possible. But with more work to do, this bird has really got to flock off. So may those stars keep shining on you, Guardians.